Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are gonna be talking about how to optimize your energy levels and boost your energy levels with food. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Becca. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm very passionate about nutrition and I'm also equally as passionate about intuitive eating. I love to educate on nutrition in a way that is approachable, but also in a way that you know is balanced because you do not have to be perfect when it comes to your diet and nutrition in order to be a healthy individual. So we're gonna be talking about how to eat in a way that's going to make you feel good on a daily basis um, You know when it comes to your energy levels. So food and nutrition is truly the fuel for our bodies. And you know, understanding the basics of nutrition, having a foundation, and also kind of understanding how nutrition and our biology interact is really a key to not only feeling good, you know, today on a day-to-day -day basis in the short term, but also for you know health and longevity in the long run. I personally believe it is super important for everyone to just have a basic level of nutrition knowledge because we all have to eat and understanding how food impacts our bodies really is critical if you want to be a healthy person. Um, I'm also a huge proponent, like I said, of intuitive eating and you know, with intuitive eating, your body really will guide you, you know, on what to eat if you really allow it and give up the control and learn to interpret your body's cues. But at the same time, I think pairing that, you know, that ability and that intuition um, with nutrition knowledge really is like the absolute key. I personally feel like you need both to really pursue a life and, you know, um, a lifestyle, I should say, of health um, using nutrition as one of the key components. And this is something that I dive so deeply into in my nutrition and intuitive eating course, Mindful Eating Made Simple. If you have not heard about my course yet, it's just gonna, it's going to be opening up again for enrollment soon, so definitely keep an eye out for that. It's an opportunity for you to work with me um, with through vi video calls, so you can ask me all of your questions and get much more individualized uh, education and support. And I also have so much education that I have absolutely poured into. We dive so much deeper than any of the videos I've ever you know shared here on my channel. It really is something I poured my heart and soul into, and I know that it has already helped my students um, that have joined so far. So definitely, if you're interested, um, be, stay tuned for more information because like I said, enrollment will be opening again soon. But anyway, so this video, we're gonna be talking specifically about how to eat for you know that short-term, feeling good, day-to-day -day basis, um, and specifically how to really boost or optimize your energy levels. So if your goal is to have good, stable energy levels throughout the day, what you actually really need to be focusing on outside of like caffeine and all the <laughs> unnatural things that will boost your energy is actually your blood sugar. And you may have never given a ton of thought to blood sugar. Maybe it's something that you thought was only something that people with diabetes need to like really look at and, and focus on. But the truth is, you know, we all have blood sugar levels in our body that go up and go down. And you know, if we understand how they work and understand how to eat in a way that's going to support that stability or stability of your blood sugar levels, that is what's really going to help you feel good throughout the day, not feeling crashy and sluggish and tired and having you know certain cravings. Um, that is really like, that's what you need to focus on. So to focus on it, what does that even mean? First, you have to understand it. You have to understand how it works. So blood sugar, um, we all have a you know a certain level of sugar in our blood at all times. There is a range that is healthy, but as we eat carbohydrates, um, you know we consume carbohydrates. They get broken down in our bodies. That is actually going to impact our blood sugar, and it will fluctuate. So when you consume carbohydrates, so think of anything that is like grain or a grain based made of flour, anything starchy, that is going to be carbohydrate rich. Fruit is also very carbohydrate rich. Those are like your two main sources where you're going to get like a, a lot per serving or you know a lot at one time. So when you consume um, something with carbohydrates, it's going to, obviously you're going to eat, it's gonna go down in your stomach and then your intestines and that is where um, the, mo the bulk of the digestion happens. And when I say digestion, I mean breaking down those carbohydrates, whether they came in as complex or simple carbohydrates, into their smallest form, which is glucose. Glucose is a sugar. 
That is how um, breaking it down into that smallest form glucose is how it actually can get passed over your intestinal wall and actually absorbed into your body. It will then go to your bloodstream where it can float all around your body and go where it needs to go. So obviously when it's entering your bloodstream, glucose is a sugar, your blood sugar level is going to start rising. So what we really want to focus on when it comes to eating and food is keeping that glucose from flooding into our bloodstream and creating this big spike because what happens then so let's say for example you eat a bowl of skittles okay so it's basically like pure sugar with some food dye maybe a couple other things in there but it's basically just like a bowl of sugar so if you eat a bowl of skittles on an empty stomach it's going to break down into glucose so quickly all at once and all at once all of that sugar is going to or glucose is going to enter into your bloodstream so you're going to get a big spike in the level of sugar in your blood. So what happens then, um, really the goal of getting sugar into our body at all, carbohydrates into our body at all, is so that we can get it into our cells and that is what um, we use primarily to make energy for our cells to then function. So what we actually, what our bodies do in order to get that blood sugar into your cells, there's one step and that is the release of the hormone insulin which actually allows for the passage of the glucose over the cell membrane. So without insulin, no glucose is getting into your cells. So when you have this huge spike in sugar rapidly, it kind of sends your body into panic mode. It's like, whoa, we have really high blood sugar levels. Let's get all the insulin going and just throw everything we've got at this so we can get those blood sugar levels down to a healthier level and also into the, our cells so they can so that sugar can be used. So we've got our huge rise in sugar, huge rise in or release of insulin. So that is all happening really quickly. And then your sugar levels are going to start to drop, obviously, because that insulin is now rapidly moving that big surge of sugar into your cells. Now, what often happens, um, so not only are we coming up really fast and down really fast, which doesn't feel great, but what often happens in this scenario is because we are kind of in panic mode and your body just starts releasing a ton of insulin, we often overshoot the amount that we actually need and we end up with too much insulin. So when our blood sugar starts coming back down, it actually dips too low. So then it's uncomfortably low. So we went from uncomfortably high panic mode, now we're at uncomfortably low panic mode again. So what happens when you're in that state is your body, not only do you feel very sluggish, you feel very tired, you are just dragging, but also you're probably going to be craving carbohydrates and most likely it's going to be simple carbohydrates because that is your body's very intelligent way of trying to quickly bring your blood sugar level back up. So you might be craving chocolate, you might be craving sweets, you might be craving bread, anything that is like really carb rich and especially those more simple carbs that's probably what you're going to be craving and again this isn't necessarily a bad thing this is your biology at work trying to keep your body at homeostasis but of course we don't want to be on this crazy roller coaster and then if you go ahead and you eat something like that so for example let's say you just you've got a bag of, you've got crackers there and all of a sudden you've like smashed the whole bag of crackers and you're like what just happened that is you know your body trying to get in lots of carbohydrates but what happens you know you eat this whole bag of crackers which is mostly flour mostly just carbohydrate we're back on the same exact hamster wheel so we've now got a big spike and then we're going to get a big drop and we're going to start craving some simple carbs again so we want to avoid this as best we can because this equals not feeling good this equals sluggish this equals cravings this equals not satisfied so we want to avoid that as best we can are you gonna do it all the time no because nobody's perfect and that's okay but most of the time if we can have more stable blood sugar that is where we're going to have better energy that's where we're going to feel much better in our bodies so how do we actually do that? The key here is to pair the carbohydrates that you're eating with the other macronutrients, protein and fat. If you're also pairing it with fiber as well, that is another way to um, improve upon this whole situation and I'll explain why. So protein and fat, and fiber when mixed with carbohydrates, and it doesn't have to be all three every time. This is best case scenario. Um, it's mixed with those carbohydrates in that meal or snack that you're consuming. When you get down to the digestion portion of you know that in your system, 
Basically, it takes the enzymes that break down carbohydrates a lot longer to get to those carbohydrates because it's not just this big like sum of carbohydrates handed to your enzymes on a silver platter with nothing getting in the way. It is mixed with all these other things, so it just naturally slows down the breakdown of those carbohydrates into glucose, which naturally slows the flow of that glucose into your bloodstream. So instead of this big, giant, quick, rapid spike, you end up with a more gradual rise. And when you have a more gradual rise, we are not enacting like the panic mode, panic button in our body, and we have a gradual rise in insulin that is virtually the perfect amount, right? That we need to get that amount of glucose that just came into our bloodstream to where it needs to go into the cells. So there's no crazy rise, there's no crazy dip, we're not feeling uncomfortable, no panic alarms are being set off in our body, and that is definitely what we're aiming for. So back to the cracker example, let's say instead of consuming um, just the whole bag of crackers, say we paired uh, you know, a portion of those crackers with cheese, which has fat and has protein. That is going to, again, slow down the breakdown of those carbohydrates, everything's going to be mixed together. Also, another thing to consider here is when you're pairing with the cheese, um, which has fat and protein, which is very filling, you're probably gonna be eating less crackers, right? If you're trying to just fill up on crackers, you're gonna end up consuming a lot more. If you are trying to you know, satisfy your hunger with cheese and crackers, we are gonna end up eating less carbohydrates, so we have just a, a less of a rise in general. So again, less reason for panic bells to be set off in our bodies. Um, that's going to create that cascade and that roller coaster. So fiber is another way that we can kind of hack <laughs> this system and keep those carbohydrates from digesting too quickly and therefore creating a, like a, a spike in blood sugar. Fiber is just another way to basically slow down the digestion. So for example, if you think about eating a piece of white bread, all refined flour, not much to it, going to break down really quickly. If you think of consuming a slice of wheat bread that has a lot of fiber in it, maybe has some seeds, which has even more fiber, that is really going to slow the breakdown um, of those carbohydrates. Does this mean that you have to eat like whole wheat everything in order to be healthy? No, it does not. But it's just another way to look at food to optimize and stabilize your blood sugar. Okay, so when it comes to optimizing your energy, I want you to think stable blood sugar equals stable energy levels. But here is a little caveat, you guys. I do not want you to take this nutrition lesson and turn it into this rigid rule where you cannot ever consume a carbohydrate unless it's paired with either protein, fat, or fiber, or all three, okay? Because that will take the joy out of eating real quick, okay? So there are gonna be times that you go to, let's say, a beautiful Italian restaurant, and you have a bowl of pasta, and it's mostly carbs and not much else, and you're gonna enjoy it and you're gonna be just fine, okay? Maybe you're gonna be craving chocolate a little bit later on, a little bit more than you, you know, you are used to, but that's okay, you know? It doesn't have to be perfect all the time. Um, I always say, especially in my course, I like to say, nutrition is a priority, but it is not paramount. It is not everything. I want you guys to be able to fuel your bodies. I want you to be able to feel good, but I don't want you to be so stressed out trying to feel good that you make yourself feel bad mentally. There is always room for balance. There is not room for perfection. If you want to be truly a healthy individual, not just physically, but also mentally. All right, you guys, so that is all I have for today's video. Please let me know down in the comments below what videos you would like to see next, especially if you'd like to see me discuss more nutrition topics. I love talking about nutrition and educating on it. It's one of my biggest passions. I do have an entire playlist here on my channel called Nutrition 101, where I do go through a lot of the basics. So if you're new, I would definitely start there to just start to create that foundation of nutrition knowledge. But after watching those videos, if there are still things that you would like to see for me, if you'd like to hear me um, uh, educate and explain on, um, then I would be more than happy. So please let me know down in the comments below so I can make videos that you guys want to watch. But that is all I have. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss any of my future videos that are coming out. You can also follow me on Instagram just to see what I'm up to over there on more of a daily basis. But thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!